Adobe's Premiere Pro CC is an industry standard video editing software. It's used all across the realm of YouTube, but that's not to say that it's perfect. It's got its issues. Some of these issues include timeline performance and playback issues and also export speeds. In this episode of Two Minute Fix, I'm gonna give you five ways you can improve all of these issues. Number one has to do with your sequence settings. So let's go ahead and dive into Premiere Pro and I'll show you what I mean. Once you have a sequence made in your project, right click on that sequence, go under sequence settings. The first thing you're gonna do is make sure the video tab is matching the correct timeline resolution. In other words, if you're going to be exporting a 4K UHD 3840 by 2160 video, make sure that the frame size says 3840 by 2160. You want it to match. The next thing you're gonna do is go under video previews, click on iframe only MPEG and change that to GoPro Semiform YUV 10 bit. Then go ahead and click on reset. What this does is it changes your video preview resolution to match your timeline resolution. This is very important because when it renders these video previews, it's basically rendering out your video as you work. That means it's going to decrease your export speed. The reason why we're using GoPro Cineform is because it's like an uncompressed codec. Therefore, you can edit much easier with GoPro Cineform versus H.264 or the NPEG codec that was originally selected by default. So that's number one. Number two, we're gonna remap the enter key to render the entire work area versus just rendering the effects. To do that, you're gonna go under the edit tab and you're gonna go down to keyboard shortcuts. You're gonna go into this little search bar right here and type in render. You're gonna see an option that says render entire work area. You're gonna click under the shortcut tab and then just press the enter button. Now, whenever you hit that enter button, it's going to render the entire project, not just the effects, and it's going to build those video previews so that when, when you export this project, it's going to be blazing fast. All right, once you have that remapped, you're gonna click OK to go back to your main project. And now you're on to step three. If you've been editing in Premiere Pro for a while, then chances are you already know number three. But if you're moving over from Final Cut Pro 10, this might sound like a foreign language. And that's the fact that you need to utilize the adjustment layers. The reason being is because you can always disable adjustment layers and that will improve your timeline playback. Basically, an adjustment layer is a blank clip. It's completely see-through and it does nothing to your actual video clip. You apply all of your effects, including color grades, LUTs, color correction, or even just random effects to your adjustment layers. That way you can disable them anytime to improve your timeline playback. Let me show you. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna apply your effect or your color grade to an adjustment layer. Then you can see how it tweaks the clip. You can disable that anytime and then play back your raw video clip and it's going to play back relatively smooth depending on your file format. Now what's also great about adjustment layers is it does nothing to your actual raw video clip, which means if you make a mistake, you can always go back and just delete the adjustment layer versus having to deal with undoing or deleting effects applied directly to the clip. It actually will improve your workflow tremendously. Number four goes back to number two. Remember when we remapped the enter key to render the entire work area? Well, whenever you get up to take a break, whether you're using the bathroom, grabbing something to drink, answering the phone, whatever it is, make sure you hit that enter key. Basically, as you work, you wanna render those video previews. That way, when you get to the end of your project, everything is rendered and you have that nice green bar from the beginning to the end of your project. That just means you're ready to export. Speaking of which, number five is all about exports. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna go to file and you're gonna export this project like you normally would. So go down to export, click on media. From here, you're gonna tweak a few things. You're gonna change the export format from H.264 to QuickTime. Then you're gonna change your preset to GoPro Cineform 10-bit. This is the same format that we originally picked for our video previews. Remember, this is very important. From there, you're gonna go down where it says video codec, go down a little bit further where it says basic video settings. You're going to make sure the quality is set on four. You can do three, but I usually do four. If you're doing a lot of scaling, such as 1080p to 4K or 720p to 1080p, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you render at maximum depth. I don't really do this because I have a different method to my scaling, but um, for most people, just check this box. It will take a little bit more time, but it's like two seconds, so don't worry about it. Then from there, you're gonna go down and make sure that use previews is checked. This is the most important part when it comes to this export process. Once that is checked, you're ready to go. From there, go ahead and click on export and watch how blazing fast this thing exports. It's insane. 
For this example, I rendered a 6 minute and 55 second 4K 3840 by 1920 timeline with multiple adjustment layers, transitions, effects, and titles using my Dell XPS 9570 6-core i9 variant with 32 gigs of RAM and a GTX 1050 Ti. When I rendered using the default YouTube 4K preset, it took me 16 minutes and 12 seconds. When I exported in Cineform, I did it in 1 minute and 3 seconds, and then I converted the Cineform to H.264, which took 5 minutes and 1 second. So, as you can see, you're getting more than a 50% improvement in export speeds, which is ridiculous. And one thing that you can do, like a bonus number 6, is you can create a watch folder to remove that last step of converting the Cineform to H.264. My buddy Armando did a video on this, you can find it right up here at a card. Make sure you watch that, he'll go through the entire process on how to set up a folder, as well as the importance of doing so. I went ahead and did it on my desktop, so that way whenever I render out the Cineform project, it goes straight into my watch folder and automatically in the background starts converting to H.264. And you don't even have to have Media Encoder open, so this is definitely a great option if you just want to remove that last step. Well guys, I know this episode of 2 Minute Fix was a little bit longer than 2 minutes, but hopefully you were able to take something from it and it fixed an issue you might have had going on. If you have any ideas for future episodes of 2 Minute Fix, leave them down below in a comment. If you're enjoying this content, make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when more episodes of Two Minute Fix drop. And of course, I'll catch you in the next episode.